Hey guys, and welcome back to Free Plugin Friday, where we look at plugins that can help in your productions without costing you anything at all. Now today we're looking at something a little bit different and that's the ADSR Sample Manager. Now if you haven't used a Sample Manager before or you just use the one built into your door, you may be thinking, why should I use the Sample Manager? Isn't it just easy enough? to use the file explorer. So we're gonna have a look at some of the features in here that really makes it super useful and speeds up your workflow. And I've just started using it a bit in the last few days. That's why I wanted to review it. So one thing to get out of the way is you can go to the ADSR store inside this sample manager and pick your own sounds from their store. This free plugin Friday, we're not looking at doing that. We're looking at using our own samples. So you're mainly gonna be sticking around in this library panel. Now there is some other panels here. You have a tags panel, which allows you to grab a tag. So you can either use a tag, a genre or a label. And these are very useful. And we'll talk about how these work, but basically every sound will be tagged. You can tag it yourself or it's gonna tag it itself um, using when it analyzes it, it tags it, which is really cool. And allows you to quickly just get sounds you want from all your packs without diving through the file structure. So if we go to library here, and we want to add a library. So I say have uh, this library of vocals. I'm going to drag that in. And it's going to scan. And it's scanned. It tells you how many different tags they had. And there's no duplicates. And it scanned them in. And then it's going to analyze them. And it analyzes them for BPM and key. So the only thing is while analyzing it can be quite slow. So you may have to wait or what you might want to do with all your different folders is drag them in separately rather than dragging all your samples at once because it could take several hours depending on your computer, depending on the hard drive and how many samples you have. So this is still analyzing it. Now I'm gonna cancel that because we wanna move on and have a look at it. And that was just kind of an example. So we're gonna remove that library source and dive straight into the sample packs. So here you have name type, which is basically loop or one shot. BPM key and tags. Now, BPM key and tags, they're really gonna be the three main things that's gonna help you out here. And there's some really cool features that work along with that. So starting off with tags is everything has a tag. And you can tag it yourself. Um, and it tags it based on the title and other metadata. So I haven't tagged any of this myself. It's just done it, you know, by figuring it out. So if we go to a sample back, for example, I go to uh, this, free Christmas pack from WA Productions. I click on it, it comes up with every single sample. Now if I actually go to the file structure in here, it's like folders on folders and all the stuff. And you know, it's, it's a nightmare to go find a sample myself. Instead, just clicking on it shows every single sample in that pack, no matter the folder structure, which is really useful. And it's tagged them all. So we've got bass, we've got hi-hat, we've got all these things. So it's tagged with what it is. And it seems to be auto playing for some reason. And, but then you also have more information here, like if it's a construction kit, if it's dry, what genre it is. And this is really useful. So if you want to make a genre of music, you want to make future bass, you can find all your samples you have that relate to future bass, which is really cool. Really, really quick there. And you can see them all here. So that is basically the main kind of way of finding samples. So I can, you know, search in here and I want kick. So I want kick from this specific folder that I've got here, which is Christmas pack. But obviously I could then go to all my sample packs and go kick. And here I have, I think 2000 different kick files. So you wanna narrow it down using other tags, of course, cause not every kick is gonna fit. So let's talk about the next two features and that's BPM and key. And this is what makes this really, really cool. And that's down here, it's door sync and key. So door sync syncs the sample you have to your door. So let's say you have a drum blue that's 170 BPM, but you're running at 140 because your song's at 140. Hit door sync and it turns it into 140. And then when you drag it into your door, it re-renders that at the gain, the key and the door sync together. And you can use that file. Key obviously is for the key and it does the same thing. So if your song is in D, select D and then it will transpose the sample. Now this sample here, doesn't have any key information. So you need to choose something that has key information built in. So let's say we've got this trumpet loop in A. It knows it's in A. I want it in E. 
does it itself, which is really great. So that's what key does. Now in door sync, just going back to that for a second, there is three different types. And uh, I guess this is important. I found the normal type is the best, but let's just take this kick loop. You have normal, you have drums. I'm just gonna put it on repeat so you can hear the difference. That's drums and you have smooth. Now smooth really obviously affects the transient. So I think you'd use that for vocals or bass or something. But I found normal works fine for everything I've done so far. So you, you generally want to stick with normal. And you may not want to change the key of drums. So if drums has key information like this kick loop does, really depends if those kicks are a certain, the, there's a tonal representation of the note, the fundamental is obvious, you might want to, but for other percussion and stuff, you might not want to. And for single one shots, you might not want to use door sync because they're going to actually change how long that one shot is, and generally with one shots, that's the length you want. It's tempo irrelevant, really. But you can turn it on and off however you want. So that's really that. And the other thing, obviously, is tags. And so I already showed kind of how that works. So I think the best way to do something is to show it in action. So let's just quickly make a bounce track by using the tag genre Melbourne Bounce and finding what samples we've got and we're going to use key. So I'm going to pick the key of E, uh, we're going to put door sync on and we're just going to start off with kick, right, Melbourne Bounce. Now we have all my kicks for Melbourne Bounce. Now I could put in key as well, so if you didn't want to transpose the key and you just wanted to say the key of E, you can do that or you can transpose. So we're gonna clear the keys for now because I wanna show transposing such. So let's have a look at kick. Now ah, we wanna transpose it, right? Kick, so E. Let's go there. Now let's turn the gain down because a lot of these samples are normalized, which is really annoying when you're actually mixing. So we're just gonna go minus 9.5 and it will re-render it minus 9.5. So I can drag that into my door. So I'm just gonna make this window smaller, uh, just a bit smaller and move over here so we can see what we're doing. So now I've got that kick and it's actually not sync to my door because I didn't want it synced to my door. So then we can obviously drag it across and I can do what I want with it. Um, we're just going to turn that into a quick uh, loop. So now we have a loop in Cubase and let's go find a base. So same thing. Now this time we might want to keep it in E. So I'm just going to search E. I like that one. So we can drag that in. Now, door sync is on and the key is on, but it's in the key B, so it didn't do anything. So that's gonna work perfectly fine. And that's what we've got straight up. Cool, sounds good. So let's get rid of the Melbourne bounce tag. Let's keep that in and let's just find a lead in E. Uh, Now this is a trap lead, but I think it works. So I'm going to drag that in. So that's part of the loop now. So we got. Now let's go find a hat. But let's just choose a different genre just for something fun. So I might go hat and we're gonna go house. We're gonna go genres house. Now you may notice sometimes things don't come up as all because I've got it set on all. I'm just gonna turn that off. Uh, we've got it set on all. So we wanna and. So it's hi hat and house. So that's going to help us with uh, finding, you know, a hi-hat for house, right? And maybe we want loop. So we want loop as well. 
So now we've got hi-hat house loop. Sounds good. Let's put that in. So we've got that. And then maybe we need a kind of pad. Uh, so let's go see EDM. We'll go EDM as a genre. And we'll go pad. See what comes up. Yeah, so EDM didn't work so much for pad. Let's just go pad. We're going to go back and put the root of E2. So then it gives us one pad. So maybe let's remove that and we just do it. Let's do that. And then let's find some vocals. Let's just check that that uh, did it. Now, I have found sometimes door sync doesn't really line it up probably because based on, um, like I said, it is based on the kind of transient. So for something like that, I'm just going to turn door sync off and use the musical mode built into Cubase. So that sometimes you need to experiment a little bit. Uh, it doesn't always necessarily become the best thing for you to use that. But uh, let's just copy that. Uh, let's copy this one. And let's grab some vocals. So we're going to just search vocals in here as a tag. Uh, let's just try and find some vocals. Let's find the key because we don't want to pitch your vocals too much. It's not always going to tag vocals as vocals, so you've got to go check through all your packs because I do have more vocals than this. But anyway, let's just go find something from here. Let's try that. And then I'm just going to move this out of the way for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of set it up as a bit of a song. that's something uh, and you want to add some down lifters you want to do that we're just going to quickly do that down lifter we try door sync now it doesn't always work but let's try door sync here we're going to add a door down lifter there and we're going to use an uplifter on the other side Now let's see if this works. Now again, it hasn't done it properly. Let's try a different mode, maybe. It's interesting the drums does that. Let's change it back to normal. I'll try that in there. And now it seems to fit. Obviously you want to do more than that, you want to build up or whatever, but you can see how I can just drag in samples, they're all in the same key, you just put them in, you can chop them up. Now like I said, it doesn't always work when you go to this uh, door sync, so you do have to play around a little bit and make sure maybe you've clicked it and then try it out and then drag it in, and sometimes you might want to just use what's built into your door. But it is still pretty easy to use. So that's the ADSL Sample Manager. Thanks for watching. Go grab it. It's free. And if you're not using a Sample Manager, now, obviously, if you've already got some other kind of arrangement you're used to in your workflow, this might not be something you want. But for anyone that hasn't really tried a Sample Manager, I'd give it a go because it is really easy to kind of find things quickly that you want. And it really puts all your samples together in one place. And I found it really, really useful for my workflow. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.